So to close then, where are you headed? I know obviously right now with the uh, health situation we have, we're all bottled up inside. And yeah, I'm mostly trying, sitting at home. <laughs> well, um, to stay sane, but where, where are you thinking you're gonna go next after this book? Um, that's a great question. So I have a couple of projects. Um, I have um, a, an article I'm working on that um, is a co-authored piece about um, a rabbi con man that um, again has a lot of fun um, juxtaposition going on there mm -hmm. of a, a guy who is both a rabbi and a con man um, who sort of is the Forrest Gump of the 19th century and he sort of bounces around showing up at key moments again mm -hmm. and again he's got he's got these bit parts right in the background of like key moments in American history in the second half of the 19th century um, and so I've got that project. Um, I hope to eventually expand that into a book project. Um, I do need to return to my dissertation project eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I hope to. Um, I need to go back and revise my dissertation into a book. And, and I will do that. I've also done started in on um, some projects about, about slavery. Um, I think this is, and slavery on campus has really drawn my interest. I have some, um, a research project I've begun looking at, um, and we've and I've, with, along with a grad student, been indexing the Confederate slave rolls. And we just finished our first draft of that index. It's a, um, there are six, about 6,000, almost just under 6,000 um, of them that were digitized by the National Archives, but they basically lack metadata. Mm -hmm. And so we made a geographic index that tells us where each of them is so that um, we can look. Um, if you want to know all the, where enslaved people were laboring in the Charleston area, we can tell you who was laboring where. It has names. It has the, mm -hmm. the names of enslaved people. And so we were able to, for instance, use that to find the names at the College of Charleston of enslaved people who were um, enslaved mm -hmm. by the president of the college. And they were forced to work on in the, uh, in the in a military industry in Charleston during the war. And so we- Of course, we, well, that president of the College of Charleston have to sign your tenure letter eventually. No, no, the good news is we have a new president. We've had a few presidents since then. Uh, and our latest president um, does not enslave anyone so far as we know. Um, in fact, he seems to be a really great guy. Um, I'm actually really happy with our new president. President Chu is, is, is phenomenal. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, we have, um, so there's that project going on and I'd like to um, expand that into a digital humanities project ultimately. Yeah that would allow um, other scholars to be able to use this because I think a lot of us do look regionally, right? Mm -hmm. We all have our studies, but I think a lot of people, they, they focus in on a specific community. Mm -hmm. um, and that this is a really useful way to include African-American history more fully in, in it if we just make sources available. And this is a great set of sources that are geographically limited. And so we were able to find, uh, you know, Nathan Bedford Forrest um, getting paid by the Confederate military for the labor his people he enslaved are doing for his unit. And he's getting paid for it. Um, so it's kind of like, and we can find the Lee family, you know, Robert E. Lee's family getting money for those very same people probably who were, um, he was supposed to be setting free, right? Because they'd been inherited with that, that will that said that they were eventually supposed to be free. So we're able to find all these things. And we've started a well, hashtag slave roles on Twitter. We've done a few, Mm -hmm. uh, sort of uh, examples for people to sort of see what we can find. But my hope is that by spreading this around eventually, you know, anyone who's studying their own college can find their local towns. You can look in Athens, Georgia and find, and I was able to do this. I sent it to over to them. You're able to find uh, the university renting out uh, property to be a Confederate hospital and, cool. and also enslaved people working in that hospital. And so all of these sort of documents I'd really like to see included more because I do think African-American history is needs to be more included in civil war history that we often ignore african-american contributions and aspects and participation um i'll give a good example i just and this is early research but looking at fort johnson which is just down the road from me it's where the civil war began right the first mm -hmm. shot inspired from there's a period during the civil war where as far as i can tell and this is early uh, i haven't found the exact numbers yet as far as i can tell i think there may be more enslaved people working on those fortifications at one point than there are confederate soldiers stationed there and so if you think about what did Fort Johnson look like from afar, you wouldn't have seen a bunch of white guys working on it. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't have seen it, you would have seen African-Americans working on it. So it changes, and this is something that Kevin Levine has talked about more recently um, in his most recent book, right? He talks about this in the early chapters, sort of how many African-Americans are there with at the war, 
Um, and so got a lot of projects going. Uh, we'll see what happens next. Divided communities, maybe that's the dissertation projects, which is all about how divided communities are put back together after the war. Uh, but they're all on the on the road. I like to have a lot of things in the <laughs> pipeline. Uh, I don't like to have one project at a time. Sounds like you will be busy for the next few years. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Adam, for talking thank, to us. Thank you for having me. As always, it's a pleasure to see you.